Hey, welcome to the new Blue Jay Banner podcast here. Uh, Tim Kruger, Ross Ferrarini with you. We'd like to thank all our sponsors, Equitable Bank, West Pacific Dental Group, and DJ's Dugout, where we are live doing the show. Tim and Ross with you, just like the old days. If you haven't, if you're a former member, uh, someone who's listened to our show over the years, you know the format. It's all about Creighton Athletics, and Ross and I have been doing it for several years. If you haven't, if you're stumbling across our podcast now, thanks for joining us. Both of groups of people, if you do us a big favor, hit that subscribe button down there, and it'll help us out a lot. If you haven't, uh, if this is your first time and you haven't listened to us before, we have the best Creighton coverage anywhere, so come back here every week for a weekly podcast on Creighton basketball and all sports. And then as well, uh, when we get into basketball season, we'll be doing a lot of the post games. So we've been doing a couple of test shows. This is another one. We're just testing out the equipment and everything. Um, we're doing it a little bit later than we normally do, so the lighting's a little bit of an issue. But we'll get that figured out. If you have any questions, you can always uh, email us at bluejaybanner at gmail.com. Tim Kruger, Ross Ferrini, over there on the left is our producer, Zach Weaver. How's it going? Good. Zach, how are you? A little hectic, but we're doing all right. A little sweaty. (laughs) Okay. Uh, On the show today, we've got Joel Lorenzi of the Omaha World Herald, beat writer from Creighton, and he just sat down with Doug McDermott, so we're going to ask some questions about his interview with Coach. And he also checked out the volleyball team, so we'll check it out as we're just a little bit away from the season starting. Tim, I hate to do this to you. You, you did the you did the old national media mix up, calling Coach Doug. Did I really? Yeah, you did. I haven't done that in years. It happens. Doug, Greg, well, you both know, in the Doug was light. coaching this summer, so yeah. you know there is that. I'm sorry, Greg. <laughs> Greg McDermott, Coach Mac. Uh, then we'll have a segment, what's what's on the menu later on. And then uh, we're going to break down uh, Kalkbrenner and Kaluma, two guys. Uh, everybody expects big things out of this year, so we've got some video on those guys to break those down. But we want to get right to it right now, and we want to bring on Joel Lorenzi, beat writer from the Omaha World Herald. Uh, Joel, how are you? What's going on, guys? I'm telling you, I'm, I'm currently, it's, I know this is my... My typical scenery, like my bedroom or something. I'm, I'm at, uh, I'm on like 24th or something. I'm, at, I'm out at a court actually. Uh, yeah. With, with Demi Watkins, with the Nebraska writer, so having it, a good time. Out okay, there. yeah. I heard you. Love I heard, it. I heard on you. The court. On, I saw you on Twitter today looking for courts, so I knew you were going to be yeah, playing some hoop. Yeah. So, Great recommendations from the crazy fans out there. Uh, nice, <laughs> nice, <laughs> nice. Well, thanks a lot for joining us. Um, you got a chance uh, to take I – I want to talk a little bit about volleyball first before we get into basketball. You got a chance to see the Creighton volleyball team probably for the first time in the exhibition game against South Dakota. How, what did you think? Yeah, and I, I, before that, I caught, you know, a practice and then, uh, like, the blue and white game, obviously. But, um, I mean, you can only take so much out of these exhibition games, right, especially one that's uh, against themselves. But, um, I mean, for what is worth, in these showings, they've looked impressive. I mean, and granted, like, uh, this team is around the same range that it entered uh, ranking-wise as last year. I think it was 13th entering the season last year, and now they're 18th. Um, and some of that, obviously, is because like, they graduated a couple of middles. Um, Jayla, obviously, isn't, isn't playing, and they don't know her concept for a return. So um, that will lower your feelings, for sure. Well, I think they got some things to look forward to in terms of just how much depth they have is something that Pearson's uh, bragged a lot about. And um, frankly, you know, while they missed Jayla, uh, Keely Davis is still very productive. And they got a freshman, uh, Ava Martin, who is, I mean, and I, me and Matt uh, DeMarinas uh, have talked about this a little bit, but he's kind of showing similar flashes that North Sisters were showing last year. And I'm not. I don't want to draw the comparison as early, but um, I think that she's showing some really impressive things. So there's, there's stuff to be excited about with this team, for sure. Somebody, somebody mentioned to me the other day, I, I hadn't heard this before, but they kind of said, are, 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 is Creighton becoming the Gonzaga of volleyball? In other words, always ranked, uh, get different 
uh, levels of advancement in the NCAA tournament, but never really cracking through and getting to the Final Four. It took Gonzaga basketball a long time to do that until they hit the Final Four uh, twice now in the last, I think, four years. Do you think maybe Creighton's somewhere in that? I mean, is that an accurate description of where the where the program's at? Uh, well, Gonzaga, I don't know. The thing with Gonzaga is they've had such great teams, basketball-wise. They've had such great teams. Like, these are teams that are, like, consensus top five in recent years. Honestly, Creighton's had that kind of talent. But in terms of, you know, never quite getting over the hump, in the tournament, that's accurate. And um, you know, the second round outs are always cold, and they hit you hard. And frankly, I'm not sure if this is the year that they break the stigma. But it'll be interesting to see when Jayla gets back, like if if and when she gets back, um, if they can. Because I think with the depth they have, and with Jayla returning, and you know, back to typical form, I I think they can go further than the second round for sure. But then again, you know that. When the tournament comes around, some of that is luck. Some of that is, uh, you know, whether sure. you pitch your stride at that time. So it's, it's so unpredictable. Yeah. All right, so you had a chance to sit down with Coach Mack uh, last week. I guess first, what were your first impressions of Coach Mack? Coach Mack is an interesting dude. Um, <laughs> he, he's very, I don't know, he's, like, he's almost like the Pope around here, you know. Like, uh, people people love him. Uh, he's done great things here. He's been here so long. He's just a faith for the community. And um, frankly, just he knows basketball really well. Um, this is a dude who's been coaching forever. He's done a great job here. And, you know, when, when we you know talked last week or, or whenever that was, um, it was just interesting to see his faith, obviously, because everybody, I think, um, everybody views basketball differently. But we kind of, we shared some views about the team. Obviously, he's, He's going to be more optimistic about the team than anybody else. But um, he, was, he was pretty fair. I, I, I can respect that about him. He's pretty fair. Joel, now that we're into into school, having started, you know, I know volleyball is kind of your main focus, but how often are you getting over and, and watching the Hoops team work out? Is that kind of uh, secondary to, to volleyball right now, or how, how does that schedule work for, on your end? Yeah, yeah. Um, I wish it wasn't secondary. I don't know if I want to call it secondary because, I mean, hoops. That's the – hoops is a big deal around here. I mean, volleyball obviously is a huge deal around here, especially with the crosstown or, you know, the rivalry with Nebraska. I don't know if I would call it a rivalry today. But um, it's, volleyball is obviously a big deal around here. We're in season now. So I'm treating that with most of my attention. But basketball is definitely still – I still got a mail bag coming out soon. I'm working on a bigger profile on one of the players. I won't say who right now, but I'm working on a profile that will probably come out in the next three weeks or so. So stay tuned for that. So it, it, it definitely isn't taking a back seat for sure. Hey, Joel, when you did that, when you did the article, I like kind of the way you did it because you kind of went player by player and kind of asked Mac questions where you kind of got a sense for the depth chart, so to speak. Was there anything that surprised you of somebody he brought up uh, Maybe more than you thought. Maybe he would. Hmm. Surprised me. I can't say I was surprised. Um, and maybe that's because I was the one asking the question. So I kind of, you kind of almost ask a question, sort of expecting a certain answer most times. So um, I can't say I was surprised. I will say I've been surprised with. Uh, I think some people like some of the people that read my story kind of assume some stuff I'm, I'm very i put a lot of emphasis on on the precise words and precise words so some people read my story and they were like oh yeah ben chokeberg is about to take off he's a star and granted he is a star in the making but i don't think it'll happen as soon as people right. are projecting it based on what i wrote and um that's on them because i i wrote it exactly how i meant it and i what i said was ben chokeberg is probably most ready to contribute among the freshmen which i still believe is true in terms of being ready, if he they put him in the game right now, he's most most ready, I think. But they got a crowded backcourt. You gotta you gotta they got a really crowded backcourt. So when his time comes, it, it might not be as early on as a, a Fred King who people were uh, repeatedly asking, you know, is he gonna play? Of course he's gonna play because he's the only uh, other true big, right? Right. Uh, but but in terms of being ready, 
Um, Fred King is still early in his development. He's only been playing basketball for like four years. Uh, but they, they're very high on him. And I'm not saying he won't be a good player, uh, but some of it is going to be throwing him in the fire. I was a little surprised when he said he'd really like to get an eight-man rotation. I thought he'd go deeper than that. I'm sure he will at the beginning well, of the season, but I'm sure he's talking more in the conference schedule. Well, so he didn't say that. I, I wrote that he typically sticks to the eight-man rotation because that's just what I've noticed. And, you know, I've, I've heard rumblings of that. But, frankly, I've also heard rumblings that if there ever was a year to break that eight-man rotation and go even deeper, this is probably the yeah. year because they have that kind of thing. Right. Hey, Joel. Get back on the court. You probably got a game ready to go. Something like that. <laughs> All right. Thank hey, thanks, man. Appreciate it. Always. Yeah. That's Joel Lorenzi, beat writer of the Omaha World Herald. I think before we uh, take a quick break, we should talk about uh, Roddy Andronikashvili leaving the program, Ross. Yeah, probably best for, uh, you, know, you know, despite the fact that, that Roddy did some really nice things and, um, you know, really appreciated all of his contributions last year, and he really gave a spark off the bench. Probably best for all parties. It was just and the reason I say that is just a very you know, as Joel just mentioned, a very crowded backcourt. Um, he's he's had some success with the Georgian national team this summer. Um, he's a little bit of a little bit of an older guy. Um, it, it just probably suits him better to to try and go professionally in Europe at this stage. Yeah. Uh, well, we'd heard some rumblings in the spring, but then that kind of settled down. But then right. some people had noticed he was gone away from campus for quite a while, went back home, and just yeah, it's got. I mean, back, so. I mean, gosh, it, it, I mean, he's a twenty-one, twenty-two-year-old kid. He's you know, he's playing in the FIBA World Cup qualifiers with with grown men that are playing sure. professionally. I mean, that 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 probably changes maybe your sentiment on things a bit. And not only that, I mean, obviously you're going through summer workouts, and all of a sudden you're looking around, going, "Wow, yeah. I'm probably not going to get." the minutes I maybe thought I was going to get because there is so much talent on this team. Right. Especially at his position. Yeah, it's just a, mean, lot know, of, a lot of good guards that, that want minutes. Right, and I, I, I firmly believe we're going to see Reef and, and – uh, uh, Ben. No, Reef and Nemhard on the floor at the same time. Oh, right, 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 right. So we're gonna, probably going to play some two-point because Reef has been playing so well this summer. So yep. then that's, that's another guy that's in his, you know, so to speak, There's position. No, no so, doubt about it. So, all right. Let's take a break, and uh, we're, when we come back, we're going to uh, check out what's on the menu here at DJ's. This is the Blue Jay Banner Podcast. All right, welcome back to the Blue Jay Banner Podcast, and it's time for what's on the menu. Uh, each week, we're going to try something out here at DJ's Dugout, and tonight, Ross, we're trying Tanya's Ale. Now, so we had Sonny, and now we got Tanya. Uh-huh. Well, that's an interesting flavor. Yeah, it's got a little bit of a, uh, I don't even know how to des- describe it, kind of like a bite at the end. Yeah, yeah. Very good. Now, this is named after Tanya, who is the manager out at the 192nd and Maple location, right, kind of a right across from uh, Indian Creek. Okay. You know, and a nice place out there. If you haven't been out there, go check out that DJ's. Locations all over town. Number one, voted the number one sports. Yeah, they've bar expanded here quite a bit. Yeah. I, rem- I remember when they really only had the the original on 114th. Yeah, and then they had the one in Bellevue. And they had the one in Bellevue. Yep. Yeah, that's about and it. In Bellevue, they built a new one. 114th. They moved into the old Clancy's building. They moved in. They they built this one and moved down here when I was a junior in college. Yep. I specifically remember. And then uh, yeah, then they've just expanded like crazy to all locations. So yeah, this is kind of good. All right, well, Ross and I enjoy some more of this brew. We are going to break down a couple players. Uh, first up, we're going to take a look at, uh, I think, our, uh, uh, excuse me, Ryan Kalkbrenner, who. Uh, big Kalk. Big Kalk. I think. Rebound, his fifth. There he is running the floor. Um, Here's what I'll say. Uh, I, one thing that he improved on a, a ton last year was his uh, conditioning and his inability to run the floor. Because I thought he really struggled yeah, with that as freshman year. I think so, year. too. And I thought, I thought he did a much, much, much better job of really being durable, quite honestly, and, and being in shape. I mean, obviously, he, got, he gets hurt in the NCAA tournament. But for the most part, gosh, he, re- he really was... 
a staple, and and, and, and he, had, he added that last year, and that's another. I know. I'm watching this video, and I watched it the first time. I'm like, I don't remember making that many threes. Well, he only he, he did only make a few, but but he's very capable. And he's now, got a nice shot. And, and and if he shows that capability, especially in the non-conference, I mean, it, he's really going to be a force in conference play because because defenses are, are going to have to guard and respect that. Yeah, he's got he you know when he gets on a low block isolated, I mean, he's just he's tough to handle, and he has great footwork too. Like he he doesn't like right there's a play where a guy. You know, a lot of center GC travel, you know, when they get that dish underneath. And he, you know, the other underrated thing at Kalk is his hands. I mean, he's getting passes, bounce passes in traffic with a lot of hands around him. You rarely see him juggle one. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, he's been, uh, I'm trying to pull up last year's stats. I must have got rid of the tab, but... Um, but yeah, no. He, I mean, there's a reason that he's he is very, very firmly on a lot of NBA teams' radars is because he's, you know, at, at his size and his length, he's shown he's shown some athleticism. He's shown an ability to to have good footwork and finish at the rim, and and obviously he's an elite shot blocker. I mean, gosh, he's Ryan's got a chance to be one of the better players in college basketball this year. Absolutely, one of the, obviously one of the best shot blockers. Like even when you look at a guy like Walker Kessler from last year at Auburn, who averaged about uh, no double. averaged I think just about five blocks a game, and he which dunks led to NCAA. Over. Yeah, he, he's a late round draft pick, and now he's on the Jazz. They traded Gobert for him, so they've got another you know lengthy seven foot guy. Yeah. And that's I the I, same kind I of think I think Kalkbrenner can do more than a guy like Walker Kessler can too. Yeah, yeah. he's definitely more. Yeah, Kessler is good though. He was a good shot blocker. No, Kessler's a good shot blocker, but more in terms of just running the floor. Oh, absolutely. Brendan. Well, and that's a that's a product of being at Creighton. As well. And I think we're going to see more of that this year too, because we're going to, you know, as Joel was discussing, Mac wants to really pick up the tempo. Get back to kind of that old old Mac style of play. But, yeah, absolutely. You know, it's going to be a, it's going to be an interesting balance though, because this is a team that really, really, really improved. Obviously, defensively last year, and their calling card essentially was was on the defensive end of the floor. So you don't want to necessarily lose that either. So it's um, it's going to be interesting. I think they're they're probably going to rely on, quite honestly, a lot of Ryan Kalkbrenner shot blocks and um, and maybe trying to force turnovers and get out in transition. Yeah, right. Like that one right there that he just blocked, and you know, uh, Nemhart took it down the floor. He comes from a long ways away sometimes too. You know it helps when you got probably a seven-five wingspan. <laughs> yeah, I know it. That certainly I know helps. It. Yeah, when he comes over as a secondary defender, man. This is quite the highlight package. I mean, it, it seems like we're okay. Yeah, it just I ended. I said it, it seems like we're about to show every single block he had in the year. Yeah. Well, we I think we saw every three. <laughs> yeah, probably. But if you see him, if you see him, he he's a tremendous. He's actually a really good three point shooter. He can knock those shots down, and my goodness, when he does that, it's going to be crazy. Yeah, you know, I don't know. I'd, I'd go so far as to say really good. I, and that no, the only reason I say that. Warm up, so he the only, yeah, and the only reason down. I say that is because just, just because we haven't seen it enough. So, well, yeah, it, it's possible. I hear you. I hear you. Um, All right, but, let's let's take a look at Arthur Kaluma. And the first part of this video is all um, three-point shots, which I think is really interesting because that's where he struggled, I don't know, I want to say at least half the season. Especially early. Yeah. Um, he, you know, he, he, he got into a, a little bit of a rhythm um, for, a, for a stretch there in conference play. But for the most part, yeah, he really struggled, which was interesting because the coaching staff kept telling everybody, yeah. he's our best shooter in yeah, practice. We, we track all of this. Um, but, uh, but, but, you know, hopefully, the, obviously this year, you know, this is a, a part of Arthur's game that's going to really be able to expand and be a little bit more consistent. Yeah, and with, with the way he can take the ball off the dribble, I mean, teams, you know, this is the NCAA tournament, of course, against Kansas, but so it was way late in you know, the last game of the year, but... Early on, people were letting him shoot, and then once 
we, as you said, we kept hearing he's the best shooter we've got, three point shooter. We we've, we've charted it every week. He's the best three point shooter, and once he started knocking some down, then he was a real force. Because then he can take it off the dribble and go, as you're going to see here in a little bit. Yeah, I mean, God, that's a tough shot. I mean, that's a nice one-two in transition right into your jump shot. I mean, he's he, he's more than capable of becoming a 35% to 40% three-point shooter. And it's, it's all going to be, you know, and you hope that this year with all the weapons that we have offensively, he's going to get a lot more rhythm jumpers. Now, the thing that is a tad concerning um, with Arthur is he – you know, he, he does tend to want to take guys one-on-one because he's got the body and the athleticism uh, and the ability to get to the rim to do so. So, you know, you hope that somebody like him, you know, the ball doesn't stop, you know, when the ball is being moved from side to side of the floor, um, but that, you know, he's not going to stop and, and, and kind of size up the defense for about five, six seconds there before he makes a decision. So hopefully that that's not something that he'll um, he'll deal with much, but... Right there, I mean, and, and some of these you're watching, like that one's wide open, but the one before that, Julian Champagny's long, and he was right in his face, and he right. still knocked it down. And that's what impressed me when you look at some of these threes that he hit last year. Um, again, one had one wide open, but you, you see different ones throughout the throughout the course of this video. Right there, I mean, Lewis came out, and, you know, defended, you know, gave him a challenge pretty well. Sure. It's garbage time right here getting killed by Colorado State. And now now here's now that's here's, that's kind of the Arthur show. Yeah, here's it's, the thing that we thought we'd you know we'd see from Arthur. I mean that's the these are the types of plays that you know if we're if we're looking up and this team has a season that everybody expects them and wants them to have, he's gonna be the guy on Sports Center most nights and, and those are gonna be the highlights because he is awfully athletic. He is tenacious around the rim. He's strong. He's got the the length. I mean, that's just that's a move right there. I mean, what can you do with somebody like that? I mean, if he gets if he gets you on on his hip and he's driving to the rim, there's not much you can do about it. Yeah, absolutely. Not like that. He, he's pretty strong going to the hole too. You know, that's stronger one of his, than that's he, one of his stronger, biggest strengths. Stronger than he looks. Let's I mean, that that's way. absolutely one of his biggest strengths. Is his size? I mean, he he is. Arthur is tailor-made as far as his size to be a wing in the NBA. Yeah, I mean he's just yes. he's just got the body type. He's got the he's got the prototype body for that. Showtime is right, and you know I, I thought uh, he gave really good effort on the defensive end all year too. And he's I a kid, he improved as the season. Arthur went along. Arthur play, and here's here's the thing about Arthur. He's a scorer. But Arthur plays really hard. I mean, Arthur goes after rebounds hard. He he crashes the offensive glass. I mean, he's a kid. He's just he's just kind of a gamer. Watch out. I mean, those are just impressive dunks. <laughs> yeah, I remember specifically the two from the first couple games of the season that didn't look so great. The, at least the games, the dunks were great. The games didn't look yeah. so great. But then it was really. <laughs> but see here here again. Now this is this is at the Big East tournament. So now he had hit that three. So now guys come out on him, takes yep. it right to the hole. Yep, exactly. And Kalkbrenner does a great job of sealing out out there, too. And, boy, if he hits that shot, <laughs> he's pretty tough to handle. Kaluma by his defender in. Here's the whole defense against Kansas. I think it's first-round draft pick with Christian Brown. Yeah, I forgot he got scooped up. It was like yeah. 20. Him was it 20 and, and Abaji, yeah. yeah. And here, he's going against Nunji here. Just eats him up. And Nunji's back. And I'm, I'm going to tell you him. what, Xavier's got a good basketball team. I, they have a talented roster. I, I, I think, Tim, and we'll save this for another show, I think Xavier is going to be probably our main challenger for the Big East title. Well, That's kind of a bold you know, claim, but that's my claim. Well, I mean, you got to, when you got Sean Miller on the bench, you got to, you know, 19, you still treat give him a lot of okay. props right we'll off the bat. Yep. No matter the talent. Look at that. Three swat, three blocks in a row. Do they give him three? I don't know. Yeah, Kaluma and Kalk might be a nice high-low, you know? 
Oh gosh, they could be a, a very, very lethal duo. Um, Welcome everybody. Quite to honestly, the- any of our guards in a two-man game with Kalk could be very, very yeah, lethal. Absolutely. So. All right, that's our rundown of Kalk and Kaluma. We hope you enjoyed that. We hope you enjoyed our conversation with uh, Joel Lorenzi, the beat writer of the Omaha World Herald. We're going to finish our beers here and uh, call it a night. Uh, by the way, hit that subscribe button down there. It really helps us out. We really appreciate it. So we'll see you next week.